Okay, I, I think we're on air. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm sorry for the little bit of a, a delay, uh, as I'm sure you all can imagine, since we've all been on Zoom and webinars uh, a lot over the last year, that technology issues are, are pretty common. But uh, I wanted to introduce myself. I'm Jamie Parrott, Vice President and Chief Operating Officer at MedResults Network. I am delighted to welcome you all here today, and thank you for being patient and staying with us for today's presentation. Uh, today's event is on a completely new topic here for us at MedResults, uh, which is absolutely not for our lack of interest. And to elaborate on that a little bit further, uh, for those of you that are familiar with our buying group, we sometimes spend months and occasionally years uh, deciding whether to add a new technology, a product or a service to our portfolio of partnerships. And that's for a number of reasons. Um, to clarify, one is that we want to ensure that the partners uh, that we promote to our members are leaders in the industry and that they offer reputable, effective and safe technologies. And two, and I think more importantly, as I myself and our executive team are not cl clinicians, uh, we sometimes have a steeper learning curve than our peers do. So it takes us a lot longer to do the due diligence that we need to ensure that we're comfortable uh, with the safety and efficacy of an innovative new technology. So um, this technology in particular, PDO threading that we're discussing today, it's come such a long way over the last few years. For those of you that already offer these treatments in your practice, uh, you're probably very aware of the history of it, which I will let our uh, esteemed guests talk a little bit more about in a minute. Uh, but this is why it's taken us so long in, um, in creating a presentation like this and, and inviting partners to speak on PDO threads. So. I, uh, to say a little bit more about this, um, you know, threading in, in general has gained a lot of attention over the last several years. And given the amount of interest from our members uh, and from the community, we felt that it was time uh, that both ourselves here at MedResults and of course our members, you guys get to explore the topic further, but with the help of an expert. So today we've invited our friends at Apollo Med Innovations to join us. As well, of, uh, as well as one of their um, key trainers, Dr. Rafael Emmerich Salas. And I'll let Dr. Salas share his experience with Apollo a little bit later in the presentation. But to give you a teeny bit about his background, uh, Dr. Salas is a board certified plastic surgeon and he's founder of the Salas um, uh, Plastic Surgery Center in Miami, Florida. He's also recognized as one of the top 10 plastic surgeons for patient satisfaction by the American Institute of Plastic Surgeons. And he was voted one of America's top surgeons by the Consumers Research Council of America. So we are absolutely delighted to have him here today. And to get us started, without further ado, Dr. Salas, thank you for joining us. I will turn it over to you. Thanks, Jamie. I appreciate the intro, uh, making me sound important over there. Um, but I'm just, uh, I just, I want to share, I'm just one of you guys. I'm just another uh, practitioner that's trying to do the best thing for my patients. Um, and in, in this type of scenario, um, the, the team reached out and said, you know, asked me if I, if I would want to speak about PEO threads and, and sort of my experience with it. And I was happy to just because I found um, that it's a, it's a key part of my practice. Um, I think all of y'all know how our, our practices grow from our initial um, sort of main product. And then we have to offer a spectrum for our, to keep our patients uh, happy and be able to cover the things that they need and they want. And so uh, in this in this uh, presentation, I think you'll kind of grasp where the, the the space lies for everybody to have some uh, PDO threads in their practice. Uh, I looked into a number of these uh, as I wanted to incorporate them um, into the practice. And I think that you'll you'll see through the presentation. So we'll go through a little bit of the history um, you know, and some of the, the items that are, I think are essential in terms of you know, training product selection and and really how you offer it to your practice. Um, the the easy thing here is, you know, me telling you, hey, you need it. Um, I don't I don't know that you necessarily need it, um, but it's it's certainly beneficial. Um, I think it's I think it's become one of the uh, essential parts of my practice because I feel like we all need to have a spectrum of offerings to our patients. Not everybody, and, and, and again, this is my experience uh, as, a, as a plastic surgeon, not everybody's ready to come into your practice and go straight for a facelift. Um, some people notice signs of aging, they, they express interest in what can I do to, 
to address this and, and us as the experts have to give them the alternatives and the options available. I think you may have a, a void in your practice if you don't have all the steps in the way. So uh, beginning some with something as, as entry level as a neuromodulator, like a Botox, a Jugo, Zeoman, Disport, um, to, to introduce them to aesthetics and something that they, you know, I know the approval rate's about 99% for the, those types of things. So once they get that and they, they start seeing like the, the, the interest and the beauty of it, then they are more interested in what else you have to offer, right? Fillers are an option. I think that the natural next step is a, a PDO thread. Uh, uh, you can get into that scenario of offering more visual and, and attainable results with lifting. Um, you, are, you can have your full spectrum. I have ultrasound technology. There's some radio frequency technology. There's, you know, and then there's surgery. Obviously that's like the, the ultimate in terms of uh, involvement, invasiveness, uh, and, uh, you know, and, and technically results, but not, like I said, not everybody's ready for that right off the bat. So the, the key thing is, um, you know, my first slide, why would you do it? Well, there, PDO threads are FDA cleared. That's a very broad statement. There's actually only um, a couple of companies that are actually cleared. <laughs> uh, they, but 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 the the ones that I'm only speaking about today, which are the ones that I I personally use, um, are FDA cleared. They're they're one of only uh, two, I believe, and, and the one that has the most indications is the the Miracu company that I use uh, through Apollo uh, Medical. Uh, so. They're absorbable surgical sutures, and, and they have been shown to be effective in, in lifting and tightening. And you can see a list there. I left it up there because it, it's it's fairly extensive. Um, and I will say not, not all the, the threads can offer lifts in all those areas. A lot of the, the threads are, aren't really good for body areas because you don't have the right thread for that. And so we'll get into that a little bit more um, as we go on in terms of like the type of thread that you select for your practice. Uh, PDO is just a polydiaxonum. You guys know that um, a form of surgical suture. You know, it was it was used previously. It was known to dissolve it with time. It also stimulates collagen and elastin around it. And so, in in the the hunt for eternal youth, we started uh, realizing that that's that can be used to our advantage. Um, you know, it it in, improves the health and quality of your subcutaneous tissue because you create that that response, right? So people started using it off label. For that, you know, for cosmetic, and and you know, initially it was, it's it evolves like other um, medical things. Like Rogaine is an example. Um, Latisse is another. You know, there's that more of a glaucoma treatment with the drops, and then everybody had beautiful lashes afterwards. So they they sort of made the connection, and, and obviously that's uh, that's aesthetics for you. We we always find a way to uh, to make things better. So um, there are many ways to to obtain them, as as you know, and that's kind of. A little bit of what we'll get into today in terms of the different uh, available threads to you um, and here's a list of just the some of the effects that they have that are beneficial and again this is more this is medical uh, I don't want to bore everybody on, on, a, on a Friday I don't want you to, to switch to happy hour mode right off the bat with me talking about you know vasodilation angiogenesis and uh, you know but these are pretty essential things that as all of us as uh, as clinicians as, as medical types uh, are fans of knowing these the details, but you're essentially, you know, in, improving the elasticity and the, and the quality of the skin, and then uh, physically using the thread to actually pull up the tissue is is one of those things that that is uh, always sounded good in theory, just uh, wasn't always able to be executed properly. So here's a little bit on the evolution. 1999, the first barb sutures, right, and uh, they had a lot of complications, so they pulled them from the market in 07. Um, you had then the polyglycolic acid threads, and uh, you know they. And then we started going towards other types of, of uh, threads, which now we have the polydiaxonum, which are the resolvable, and having the the better uh, sort of uh, results and the the better career as threads than some of the other ones that have come before it. I think uh, depending on the the age group, I don't know the demographics on everybody today, but I think you guys uh, have. You know, probably heard of the lifestyle lift. They certainly did their their number of commercials on TV uh, for a while. Uh, as you know, it was a it was not a reproducible result. Uh, so there was uh, countless lawsuits for you know false advertising, etc. 
and uh, and so obviously they they went away. Of course, uh, not necessarily because it was a bad idea, just poorly executed, I think. And and the same way that I wasn't an adopter at that time, and I am an adopter now, is the same way. I think all of you can relate from a medical standpoint. There's a ton of good ideas, but until it's right. Uh, it may not be the right thing for for us to incorporate it into a practice and do offer for patients. And in this scenario, um, it, it was that story for me where I just didn't think they had it figured out. Um, I think it made sense. I think somewhere along the line, the the the, the idea was going to come to fruition. It was going to work the right way. And I think that we are there now. Um, and I think that that the at least the the threads that I'm using, I feel really offer the the opportunity to create what we always thought was going to be uh, the thing which as you can see there back from like the 90s was uh was sort of in play but but again not exactly tweaked and i think there's there's other examples of that i'm sure all of us have have gotten really excited about some offer that some company brings to us whether by email or by a rep showing up at our office and touting some magical product and then you realize that you know it's the same three pictures that they keep showing you and uh and then you realize that you know, it sounds really good in theory, but if you sort of look at the the actual data and the and the papers and, and see what's what's out there, uh, you realize that they haven't quite figured it out yet, and it's it's probably best for you to to not necessarily adopt these t you know technologies un unless they're ready, right? Um, I think here uh, as an, and as nice slide, you know, old versus new threads, you know, single purpose threads. There's literally was like one item that you just went in and did whatever you could to just kind of you know, do a little uh, marionette type thing and pull everything up with one with the strings. Um, now we sort of graduated to what we call the toolbox, right? For the face and body, you you can have all different um, modalities of it, and I'll go through a few of them later on, so you guys can see uh, sort of very particular threads for very particular issues uh, that that may save you from having to say, "Oh, I can't really do anything about that with these threads," and say, "Yes, I have something exactly for that." And so, you know, I think. One of the, the things that, that all of us kind of wrestle with is when you're trying to get into a new technology, a new modality, you, you, you have to kind of test the waters and see, okay, is this something in my wheelhouse? Can I do this for my patients? And it's not a, it's not a am I capable or incapable? Is, is this something I'm going to be able to consistently produce results for them? Um, in that setting, you have the appeal of a single thread, right? Which some of these companies have, and they tell like, hey, it's just this one, and that's all you gotta master, and then you're good. But the reality turns into when you only have that thread, then you, once you master it, which <laughs> as, as I'm sure all of you have gone through, it, it becomes, you get very comfortable with it, and then you realize how limited you are with it. And so then, you know, it's, it's a realization that you really wish you had other tools available to do other things that you're interested in. Um, so I think that that's what, you know, the Miracle company, which is the threads that I, that I'll talk about a little bit later, I think that that's what they bring to the table is one of the key things is they do have like a toolbox, they do have alternatives, they do have things that you can reach to and say, okay, actually for this, I need this, for this, I need a little bit more of this type of thread, I need this type of strength, I need this type of, you know, makeup to create what I'm trying to accomplish with my patient. And so, um, you know, we're, we're all educated, we're all intelligent, we're all uh, capable of doing these things. It's just a matter of having a little bit of training. That takes me to the, the other segment, which is you can you can master this with the appropriate training. So even though it, it may seem daunting, you're like, well, I don't know if I want 12 different threads that I can use, right? Um, because it feels daunting. But the reality is if you have proper training, if you attend uh, some courses and get a lot of hands-on training, then it's you know, fear is just not knowing what's coming and, 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 and not knowing what you're supposed to do. Once you get that and you go through it and you do some of these, you know, thread insertions yourself, you'll be like, okay, that's fairly straightforward. You have a little bit of feel in terms of, you know, adapting it and realizing what level they have to go on. But once you get, you know, a few in there, all of a sudden you're like, okay, I, that makes sense to me. And you can pretty quickly accelerate to saying, okay, great. I'm glad I have all these alternatives present. You know, I'm glad for this I can use that. For this I can use the other. You know because it's it's a it's a pretty steep learning curve, um, and as long as it's done properly, and I'm referring to the training, I think we can you know you can get to that level of comfort, and you can get to appreciating, and then becoming uh, sort of facile and comfortable with with all these threads, and then 
really being able to provide your patients, you know, the, the, the results that they want and feeling comfortable then realizing where that fits in your, in your practice uh, offerings uh, to, to help them. Um, you know, and this is just a little bit on, on the, on the pricing. I mean, you know, just options in terms of what you would do with threads versus anything else you do. Um, I think you'll see pretty quickly and easily that, you know, spending something like, uh, you know, 12 to $40 on a, on a, on a thread to do a treatment on a patient versus, you know, uh, you know, $400 on a filler um, might be in your, in your interest to, to be able to do that. Um, and, you know, and you may say, well, it's, it's, it's not the same as a filler. And, and that's, that's, that's possible. That's true that, you know, in, in some hands, uh, some expert hands, you, you may be able to get some outstanding results with a filler that you may not be able to achieve with, with all threads, but it offers you the alternative, right? And, and this is a great example I use for, for my, you know, for my, uh, my friends when they reach out and say, Hey, you know, tell me about these threads. Why, you know, should I get them? Do I need them? Are they, you know, I saw you having your practice and, you know, uh, of course, colleagues discuss with each other. A lot of times you sort of mastermind together and, and try and figure out what's the right product for you. Uh, and if somebody, you know, has them, that somebody you trust, you reach out and, and, and get their opinion. So in this scenario, sometimes people reach out and say, you know, what are things that you see that like unique It's for example, with, with the threads that I use, um, there are very specific threads that you can do, you know, and, uh, for example, the broom thread, which is one that you literally shoot just like any other thread. It's, it's a tiny one that goes right on the tear trough and, and it really helps to soften that, that line there, which normally as most of you are probably aware of, we do with a filler. Um, I'm a cannula filler injector. I, you know, I love the procedure, but I, I also understand the complexity of it. Not everybody's keen on having a procedure where you can literally blind somebody every time you're doing it. It's a bit extreme sometimes, but if you have a, a thread that you can literally pop in there and get, we'll say 80% of the result from that, I think a, a, a large number of your patients will really appreciate the improvement, you know? Um, and I think that that's, that's where you, you have to see where, the, where this is available and where this is an opportunity for your practice, okay? Um, this slide just kind of talks about how you want to look for a training program. Um, the, I personally attended the Apollo one. Um, that's one of the, the reasons why I'm, I'm a fan of, of, of how they do things. When they reached out to me, I, I was happy to, to you know, speak about the, the, the threads themselves because I actually was part of the, the whole process of, of these threads being, you know, our thing uh, um, because I was looking into them and, and did a lot of research on them. Um, and, and just as I referenced earlier, we spoke with some, some other colleagues that, that were very well versed in these type of, of uh, devices and came to the conclusion that these were the right ones for me. When I attended the training, I felt very, very comfortable uh, after the training. I don't think it necessarily has to do with me being a plastic surgeon. I think it has to do with the amount of training that was involved and the amount of hands-on that was involved. So, you know, I think that, that this slide, if you look at all the way at the bottom there, that 50% plus hands-on training, I think that's that's being modest. I think it was easily like 75%. I mean, the didactic was at the beginning, um, just kind of went through, you know, the the anatomy, uh, which we all are pretty pretty comfortable with, uh, some of the basics of the, of the threads, some of the do's and don'ts, and then we got right to, to the, you know, doing natural threads, which I think most of you all can agree is really the part that you're trying to figure out. Like, is this something I can do? Do I feel comfortable? Is this, you know, does it feel right to me. And, uh, and in doing all those, it really became something where I was like, okay, this is very doable. And, and of course, I think as you go through this, you will be able to figure out your way of, of streamlining the procedure. So you can do, I know that the first slide said lunchtime lift and everybody's like, no way. Right. But it's true. You can really, um, get through from beginning to end in about, you know, 30 minutes. If you, once you become facile with the procedure, of course, and once you kind of develop your system as, you know, systematic of like, you know, uh, photos, vectors, injection, needle, it, access, and then, you know, and then you do your treatment. So um, it, there is a learning curve with that as well. But I think that, that the, the cool part of this, uh, especially with this training for me, was that I had, I was able to do so many in a couple of days um, in so many locations, they just had uh, that lot of models, and we just did every everything you could think of, you know, from from cheeks to jowls to neck to you know under eyes to brow lifts to you know 
nasal to even some body treatments. I mean, it, it was very thorough and I, and that's, I'm always weary of, of, of trainings, right? Because uh, I used to be a professor at the university and, and it was, we were pretty hardcore about these things not being fluff. Um, and I was, so I was a fan. I'm, I'm, I'm very positive about it. And that's why I was more than happy to, to kind of speak on their behalf. Not, I'm not a, I'm not a salesperson, uh, but, but I am a fan of people getting good training, right. And helping, helping others get good training so that we all do good things. Right. I, I don't want to be the one looking at complications from other people. Right. I want everybody to just do a good job. There's business out there for everybody, you know? Um, so, I'm a fan of, of pushing that forward, pushing education forward. Um, I, you know, on a, on a tangent, I started my own YouTube channel just for that. I literally do videos just to educate people so that other people, other trainers can, can feel comfortable with some of the things that these you know, modalities and, and treatments and surgeries and stuff are about. Um, cause I want that. I want everybody to feel a bit more empowered. Um, cause I, I believe in that there's plenty out there for everybody. So, um, just one of my one of my things. I was I was huge on the hands on thing. That's that's. I mean, I guess I'm I'm a, I'm a plastic surgeon. Because that's what I'm about, right? But but I think it was really beneficial, and I think that that's key. I think it's something you have to look for. If you if you're not going to do this one, definitely whichever one you're going to look for, ask the questions. You have to ask, and these are kind of some good basics. Like, do you guys you know show us how to do the anesthesia for these treatments? Do you show us you know what you know where I should put my vectors? Do you do you know do you have all these instructions afterwards? And I and I know I mentioned that the the uh, the didactic at the beginning was short. It's not a bad thing. Some people are like, well, I like to learn on slides, and, and and that's cool too. But the cool thing is you get all that on on a on a USB, so you take it all home anyway. It's kind of provided, so you look at it. We know that the essential is to maximize the, those days of training with the actual hands on, and then yes, you can take it home and review that at night or as many times as you like at home because it, it's all included, you know. Um, other cool things that I thought about that was was uh, let me go back because everybody's gonna get distracted with this slide about the treatment. But um, they did provide a lot of the 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 sales forward um, sort of um, we'll say uh, materials, um, not salesy, but but informational. Um, and I think that that helps because it's a lot of people are very comfortable with with the procedures, with treating the patient. But then how do you talk about it? How do you bring it up? And a lot of the materials that they provided were, were just easy. You just literally put this lookbook in the front, uh, some of the electronic books, and they, they open it up, and then it just kind of starts playing, and, and it introduces the patient to it so that they're asking you about it. You don't have to, like, kind of bring up, like, hey, listen, have you thought about threads? Like, they basically are like, hey, what's this thread thing about? Am I a candidate? And so it really facilitates things. And I think things like that make a difference in terms of, like, the companies I feel like was interested in you being successful. Right. Instead of being like, hey, go sell it, guys. Good job. Um, I think that them providing those things facilitates your, your thing. And then, I mean, I took the book and I was like, make sure I watched the videos a couple of times. So, so so we're on point with the with the uh, with the information. But I think it's clever. I think it's smart. Um, and I think it's it tells you a lot about the company you're dealing with when they are putting forth these things to facilitate your process of being successful with it. Um, so things to keep in mind. Um, and, and like I said, if you don't go with this one, definitely ask about those things with whoever you're considering, right? So that so that you can get those benefits. Um, here's just a couple of little things for you to kind of think about um, a step-by-step -step process on successful PDO threads. I mean, you know, it's not for you to memorize this. This is not gonna be, you know, you're not gonna learn how to do them today off of this slide, but just things to think about, you know, and things to to kind of consider. I put that slide on there just because it's it, it shows you sort of key points, right? But it also shows you like training is kind of essential. Like, okay, so what do the photos look like? Is it just the stand photos? Um, what's the right posture for the patients? Do you, you know, the, some of the key things here, like the you know marking ifs lateral from each other because patients aren't symmetrical. Well, that makes sense. But you know, then you also when you do it, you can also see like why they ask you to do that because you have to address issues on on the asymmetry. You know, when you're doing your thread placement and and the thread pull and things like that. So take those things into account. Um, procedure position, like prep, you know, all those little key details that, that you may or may not think about. And then just, you know, tips and tricks, especially, you know, post-surgical um, you know, recovery and then just instructions on what to do afterwards. Uh, all those things are provided for you. It's, it's sort of those things that you go home and you're like, oh man, I should have asked about this because of, you know, and, and they, you know, they even provided like 
that 16 gauge diamond tip needle, they gave you like a set of it. So you have like, you know, a number of them to use to start out with, but even just so you know which one, to, you know, from whoever, McKesson or, or whoever you order from, you know which what you need, right? It came with a kit and all the little, you know, if you have any issues, like what do you do? Here's a, here's a toolkit for how to deal with that, you know? Um, so again, I just like the attention to detail in terms of what was provided for me in a training session because we're going to a training session and, and they're really, as I'm sure you guys have all looked into this, there isn't any magical website that has all the information about it. In fact, it's almost like cryptic. You're like, is this a joke? Like why? Right, people like want to make sure that's like, mysterious. Uh, and so, but it's it's good to have some place where it's kind of all put together for you. And it really puts you in, the, in that situation where you kind of walk out of there with like, hey, I'm ready to do this. Um, these are just some examples of some, you know, some threading results. I think you guys can see that it, it's, it's pretty evident, pretty obvious. It's not magic, uh, you know, but, but it is pretty impressive with what you can accomplish. Again, you have to choose the right patient, right? Just the same as you wouldn't do a, um, a neuromodulator to address like, you know, hollowing, right? You do a filler. So, uh, it, it's, it's just choosing the right patient for the job. In this scenario, you could easily tell this lady, Hey, you should have a facelift or a neck lift. Um, that's not a bad recommendation. However, she may not be ready for that. That's a lot. That's a big surgery, right? And you, she may just not be ready for that. Now, you can do this as an intro, and then she sees it, and she's like, hey, I really like that. Um, and then the next step might be, I'll just go ahead and do it again a year and a half or a year later. Or, hey, you know what? I think I'm ready to move forward with that next procedure. You know, it, it just depends. And everybody's practice is different. You might not necessarily have to purport it a, a facelift because they're not ready, or maybe uh, you don't do facelifts. And then, you know, you, you can say, well, I can get you part of that result uh, when the time comes. If you're ready for that, then you refer them. And, and again, it's just doing the right thing for the patients is always the right thing because um, if you guys, and this is a totally random, but if you go and, and you look me up on Google, the last review I have on there is from a patient I didn't operate on. <laughs> She gave me a five-star review because I told her she wasn't a good candidate. And I was the only one that explained to her why that was the case. And so she's perfectly happy. And they never operated on her. But I got a five-star review. So just so you understand, like, patient selection is also essential. Um, that there is going to be, you know, elements like this. You know, for example, she still has platysmal uh, banding there. That's okay. She's perfectly happy with her result. Just because I see it and I know I can correct it with a, with a neck lift, doesn't mean that's what she wants, right? So this was a great intro for her. It made her extremely happy. And and that's fine. You know, in the end, it doesn't always have to be about like you got the, the procedure you wanted to do. It's about the patient being happy. And if they're happy with you, you still win, right? Because you were the one that, make, that got them there. So um, here's a slide a little bit of uh, on the better outcomes based on, you know, custom threading, right? Um, this is just some of the, the, the available... Uh, threads in that toolbox I mentioned with the Miracle threads that I use. Uh, it's just, it's it's great to have the feeling that you have something for pretty much everything that your patient is going to ask you about. And so, you know, from enhanced screws that are going to create a little bit more reaction to create a little little lip lift, you know, uh, from the broom threads I was talking to you guys about for the tear trough, you know, enhanced barbs. You know, these are these are barbs that are a much better degree of, of barb suture than, than is, is currently available in terms of their lift, in terms of, you know, for example, being bi-directional, for example, for a neck lift, you insert it, you pull it up, you know, pull it apart both ways. Um, 3D, 4D just refers on the orientation of the barbs. You can have, you know, multiple placements along the, the thread. Um, and then things like the Forte, like, you know, extra strong barbs for heavier, heavier dolls. We all know there's not the same skin on every person, right? There's different degrees of thickness. So you're going to need some heavy duty stuff. And then when you do body stuff, you definitely need heavy duty stuff there. It's not the same thickness as the face. So you're able to address those things and say, okay, I can't just cross my fingers and hope this works out. I have a thing that's going to give me the best chance of it actually working out, right? And you making that patient, you know, happy. Um, you know, uh, elastic line, that's like the, the, the super, super fancy, uh, sort of very unique thread for, um, for Miracu, you know, it's a molded barb. So, if you, this is kind of a, a cool concept, again, kind of, um, you know, being <laughs> super, super uh, geeking out on the medicine of it, but um, you guys know, of course, a thread, right? And the initial the way to, to barb it, which is like a fish hook to get it to kind of pull, was to take that thread and essentially cut 
little ridges in it to, to create that flailing which creates a barb right that's great except every time you do that you, you decrease the tensile strength of that suture um, by making a molded thread it means you actually set it down and it presses it into that with threads built in so it's a much stronger thread for what you're trying to accomplish which is lift which is really kind of what everybody is for the most part looking for right i've shown you some examples of other things besides the lift that you can do with pdo threads but i think that that's that's one of those key elements on it okay um mesh fill is another kind of cool one it's like this it's like uh those little chinese finger traps where you have the, the little mesh uh or it looks i guess more medically oriented like a stent um the threads are, are woven and they actually it's a hollow and you can use them to create a, a really nice reaction on on areas that you need more fill such as like nasal labial folds um you can turbo boost them with doing a filler through that same um you know tube and that kind of holds your filler and, and slows the, the dissolution of the filler by a little bit to, to create a more longer lasting effect um again these are just some examples this is a, a lip, 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 lip lip flip sorry um you can kind of see it's a pretty obvious result here um you know this is like a 40 dollars expense to you um, most people will you know will spend like 600 dollars for a lip lift right you have to be um my recommendation my suggestion that recommendation suggestion for you guys is keep these prices in the range of the other things you do otherwise people are going to tend to gravitate sometimes to just well i'll just try it with the with the least expensive one you you know that doesn't mean that you can't be the beneficiary of better um you know better return on your investment in this scenario um for example to, to do this with a filler up as we know is somewhere between 250 to 400 dollars for a for a syringe so um you know to each their own there's different variations it's not magic but if it's what your patient's looking for then you have a, a pretty straightforward solution um other things here like a like an eyelid lift again this patient a thousand percent a candidate for a blepharoplasty and even a, a brow pexy or, or you know brow lift but if she's not ready if she doesn't want it if her age or her medical condition precludes it then i'm all about it you know and and i do these all the time on on folks that come in and i'm like hey you know, that's a lot i can't really put you under surgery you know your you, your medical conditions are just you know it's not safe so this i can do in the office you know in again in about 30 minutes so and the patient's perfectly happy because it, it was it was nothing right or this which is i think in, in anybody's evaluation would be uh, a reasonable improvement okay so again it, it's just a matter of, of understanding that you have an armamentarium uh as providers we we have to keep up with with everything that's coming about uh in in our uh in our field and this is this is one of those things where it's it's here it's here to stay um I, again i feel like it's it's one of many things that you can have in your practice that i think is beneficial uh and again people like it so it, you know it's good to have things that people like it uh, sounds pretty straightforward but that's the reality like you don't have to keep a stock of of uh you know four thousand of these but to keep uh, a, a nice uh you know package of each available and at any point be able to do these threads you know the threads are overnighted so you you know even if you do a diagnostic evaluation say look we need to that's what i would recommend you know what you're going to do you have that photo you have the you know the instructions in available for you on the usbs you can look at the you know, vector recommendations that you had and then make your game plan and then make sure you have the threads you need if not order them they get overnighted and you're ready to go you know and and that's what i did at the beginning uh you know i, I didn't just go and have like this you know closet full of threads i just i went by patient by patient it's okay what is my evaluation of this patient what does he need what is my you know thought on that pick up my my threads order the ones i need and, you know they come in packages so it's not like you have to order one by one but but my point is in the end guess what you end you end up getting all the threads because they're all useful um and then and once you have them you're like great you know what i can just throw a thread in here and, and get this taken care of for you um so it's just a, it's just levels of comfort that you get to you know again this is a lady who had a, a number of treatments but you can kind of see from where she started to where she ended up at she's ecstatic with that result she never really wanted the the whole facelift neck lift um and so happy that, that we were able to achieve this level of result with with threads for her you know um again in the end it's it's you as a practitioner that's going to make that call is this a good a patient for this you know but that's that's your level of expertise i just want to let you know that 
there is room for this in your practice. You know, if you could say, well, if I can, you know, if I have plastic surgery as my, you know, be all end all of procedures, I can, I can, I can take you all the way from, you know, minimally invasive to maximally invasive. And, you know, there is a, a spot for it. And it definitely has, has gotten traction in my practice uh, and, and patients like it. So, you know, people are fans. And, and again, we're here to make people happy. We're in the aesthetic field, right? That's what we do. So uh, just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, you know, some of the key takeaways, of course, uh, these are all pretty straightforward. You know, they're safe and effective. We, we've now shown that um, the economics are, are just fantastic for, you know, for us. Uh, you can do any sort of bundling with other packages and, and you know, be even what we call, quote, unquote, aggressive with your special pricing um, in terms of, you know, bringing people in and, and you're still going to be in the positive, you know. Um, key things about training, I think it's essential to get good training. That's what's going to take you to the next level. If you don't get good training, those threads are just going to sit there and you're just going to look at them and be like, eh, I'll do it tomorrow. Uh, but if you have training, you feel comfortable, you're going to do it. And once you start doing them and you get comfortable uh, with it, with it, repeated patients, then, then it's when it comes, becomes easy for you. And then, then it's when you realize, you know, your, your eyes are open to everything else. Uh, it's similar to, I mean, it's human nature, right? When you see, for example, you buy a red car, um, whatever, we're going to say everybody's fancy. So you buy like a red Porsche and then you're driving around. Now you start seeing a ton of Porsches, right? And, and, and the red ones, you stand out even more, not because they weren't there before. Like nobody went out and bought it just because you did but you're paying attention to it now. And I think that this is a similar thing. Once you get into the threads, once you get that training, once you get that level of comfort, now you start looking at people in a different way. Now it's just not just do they need Botox and fillers, but hey, you know what? Threads right there could really help them out. Threads, you know, like, you know, all these things kind of, it's now one of the things that is in your brain as a useful tool. Um, and that's why I think the training is is pretty essential. I'm not sure, uh, you know, that, that if I didn't have that, volume of, of threads that I did in those two days that I would have sort of gotten into my practice, incorporated into my practice as extensively quite as quickly as I did. Um, because again, it's, I think we all have some degree of that comfort with re repetition and, uh, and, and of course with continued success, right? That, that kind of builds your, okay, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. And, uh, and pretty soon, you know, it's, a uh, it's an integral part of your practice. Okay. Um, one of the key, key things I want you to kind of keep in mind. And again, I'm not a salesperson. I'm not here to tout, you know, miracle over everything else. Miracle is just the one that I chose. Um, but a, a huge thing for me is FDA clearance, right? I need to know that the product I'm going to put in my patients has approval, right? Um, I can't say anything about any other, uh, thread companies. I think there's one that recently got like approval for one of their threads, but you know, to me, it's one of those, I have something that I'm comfortable putting my patients, my repetition is everything to me, and I need them to to counter on the fact that I'm keeping them safe. Um, the the FDA has no interest in, in keeping things hidden from, from you guys or from patients. So if you wanna look and see if that company is FDA cleared, you go to the FDA website, you know, and just type in their name, is it approved? Cool, it's FDA.gov, so it's not even a long website. And then, you know, you, you type in the name, if there's a comment about it, like, you know, approved, cleared, whatever, then you know. Th then you, you you realize what's going on, right? So, just do your due diligence. You're here to, to make patients happy. You're also here to protect patients, right? We we all know that there's plenty of people out there trying to take advantage of patients, and we we are here to protect them. We're sort of the, the champions of that cause for them, uh, and and that's why they count on us, and that's why they'll keep coming back because we take care of them, because we provide um, quality care, and you know we we basically. Um, vet these things before we offer them to them. We look into these things, we choose what's gonna be right for, that makes us feel comfortable providing to them. Um, my my gauge for my the stuff that I choose for my practice is is my plastic surgery, right? I'm, I'm proud of what I do, I'm, I'm confident in the results that I provide my patients and I have sort of a reverse model of most. A lot of people bring in patients with the minimal invasive procedure and eventually they end up getting surgery. My practice is the opposite. I I, people come in for my surgery and then they say, hey, what else do you have? Hey, I heard you do this. Hey, I heard you inject. Hey, and so it's the opposite. And for me, my injections, my devices, my you know threads, anything I offer to them has to be on par with the result that they got from the surgery. Otherwise, it erodes the trust, right? And it erodes my brand 
as being like this top level they were super happy about because now it didn't quite perform to what they thought, right? Now it's like you're chipping away at what you had set as your standard. So um, that's what we're about. You know, you got to be you got to be there to, to make people happy and, uh, you know, and, and get comfortable doing it. So um, this is just a, a, you know, the end is just about Apollo Med. They're the ones that that uh, that kind of brought this presentation. They asked me to, to, to speak about the, the threads just because of my level of comfort and because uh, I, I was such a fan during the training. They're like, hey, can you say that in public? So, uh, you know, and I'm happy to do that. Again, I want people to feel comfortable. I want people to get out there and, and make it happen for themselves. There's plenty out there. You know, there's not like one last patient that wants aesthetic treatment. You know, there's hundreds and hundreds. You could, you, know, you guys need to need to uh, adopt the, the, the positivity mindset of that there's plenty out there and, and it's okay to help each other out, you know? So I'm here proof of that concept. I'm not, I'm not, uh, you know, trying to hide my knowledge and keep it to me. I want you guys to, to see it and, you know, and, and take it with a grain of salt, do your own, do your own research. Um, but I'm a fan. And so that's why I was happy to, to kind of step in here and, and give you guys my experience on it. Okay. So I think that's it. Um, I'll let Jamie kind of take over and do, do what she does. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Salas. Now that was a, a really uh, in-depth pre presentation and overview to threading. And for anybody who's uh, interested in threading, which uh, we got a lot of feedback in our pre-event survey uh, from members of ours who are interested in, in threading. So I actually got some questions uh, prior to the event, and we've had just a couple come through, which uh, we received some answers from the, the good folks at Apollo Med, but it might be great to relay those to you to get your own personal experience. Before I jump into a couple of those questions, um, we do have a very, very short video and I, I wanna give kudos to Apollo Med. Um, for those of you familiar with Med Results, you haven't seen the Apollo Med name on our vendor list or on our website. They're not necessarily a, a traditional partner of ours, but they're colleagues, they have great products, uh, they're experts in the industry, and, and we felt really comfortable with having them be the folks to introduce us to you. So, um, I'd like to just share this quick video. It, it's about their training. It's some feedback from people who see the value in training and, and understand that if you're going to take a, a deep dive into threading, that's what you need the most. So if you'll just sit with me for two minutes and then we're gonna get to some great questions, uh, bear with me. This course has been fantastic. This is the best class that I've been to, period. This class, the instructor was much more conversational, and so you were able to get a more robust um, understanding of what was going on. A lot of hands-on today has been virtually patient. This course this has exactly been fantastic. This training was this the best. Is the best class that I've been to, period. This class, the instructor was much more the didactic so session in the morning on the first day was very thorough. We learned a lot of different techniques. The majority of our time was actually hands on. I would say probably 75% of the time was hands on. And it was really hands on. After two days, I'm extremely comfortable with doing thread lifts. The didactic session in the morning on the first day was very thorough. We learned a lot of different techniques. The majority of our time was actually hands on. I would say probably 75 after putting in so many threads, I'm feeling very comfortable with it. We expect to do CDO threads, which we've done tons, and then we've done wire fillers, and then there's micro-needling, plus all the serums. I think that it's really an outstanding class, and it really went beyond just the threads. We learned so much more about all the rest of the complementary services that do go with CDO threads, and while the threads are still the crux of the course, there is the biogel, and information about microneedling and, and just a lot of other things that really you can have for so I think it's an absolutely so much more about this all is the best class and the amount of experience that is the best class and the amount of experience that we've got the threat is, still the, is tremendous the the course. I'm there is very comfortable in doing, doing all of these procedures tomorrow when I go back to I just want other practice, things I'll be starting to use them as a I will absolutely introduce threads to my practice. I cannot wait to get them in there and get going on. Without a doubt and without any hesitation, this is the best class I've been to. When I go back to my practice, I'll be starting to use them immediately. I will absolutely introduce them. So that was that was just just a brief overview of the training uh, that Apollo offers on on the types of threads that Dr. Salas uses. 
Uh, we just, again, I want to reiterate the importance of training. I think that's where they have um, set themselves apart from others in the industry. To jump straight into the questions, and I, there were a couple um, that I believe were answered uh, from our attendees today, one of which um, was regarding NPs and PAs and whether or not they could actually uh, perform threading treatments. And uh, specifically coming from an NP in Florida, I think the answer was yes for the benefit of everyone else. Dr. Salas, is, is that correct? NPs and PAs can do these treatments? Correct, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, Absolutely. No. that's great. We also had another great question um, about recommending combination therapy uh, with threads and fillers. And so the question was, do you recommend it, uh, you know, a combination therapy with threads and fillers? And if so, how do you space out uh, patients for each step? So um, threads and fillers, absolutely, you can do it. Um, it's, it's a different, um, you, you kind of have to understand both, both uh, the treatment modalities. Uh, if you're comfortable with the, with the threading enough, then you, then I would start, you know, combining. I wouldn't go right off the bat and start doing that because, you know, it's, it's the, the, the path of the thread, you know, where you're looking that versus where you're looking the filler. For example, cheeks, it's not a big deal. It's, you know, your, for example, like your Voluma, your, your Resky uh, lift, any of those, you're, you know, you're, you're using that vector and you're injecting deep. That's, that's mimicking bone. So you're going to do a deep injection on the bone to sort of elevate and create that structure. The thread is, is, subcutaneous, right, on the underside of the dermis to kind of pull the skin up. So two separate um, things, two separate depths of location. So it's not really, they're not interfering with each other, but they do complement each other from a result standpoint. Um, things such as, for example, nasal labor pools, I talked about the mesh fill. It's kind of a, it, it's an easy, you know, it's that little tube sock or, or a stent that we place in there and then inject, you know, inside it. So just like, a, it's like a turbo boost of that injection of that, reduction of that the volume. Some people have really deep uh, rightids in that area. Um, lips, I would space out. Um, I think that those are, that's something where you might want to split it. Um, depending on your level of comfort, creating a lip ridge with a filler. Um, if you're not comfortable with that, then you know, do your do your filler first, allow a couple of weeks to settle down and then do your lip flip um, or vice versa. Do your lip flip and then do your lip filler. It doesn't, the, the order of those doesn't matter as much. It's just a matter of there is going to be some swelling in the recovery of both of those. So you have to keep that in mind in terms of not clouding your own view of the situation. And that's the only thing you do have to keep in mind that if you're doing those things, you have like your, your sequence planned, you have your, you have your process down quite a bit. And that's why I say really try and get comfortable with the threading on its own first. And then you can start mixing because if you're, if you're quick and I don't say quick, but if you're, uh, efficient with your movements and you can kind of flow through it very quickly before all that swelling kicks in, you can do the second segment. Does that make sense? Um, I, if you wait too long, you are getting swelling. Now that's an artificial uh, view and, and, and it's harder to determine exactly where your, your filler needs to go. Um, so there's, there's different elements of it. Um, I certainly think threading, uh, if you're doing something, for example, like a, say a marionette line, right? So, you would do your threads to pull up and then what remains, then I would fill that. You know, that, I think that's something is to, for example, your swelling is gonna be along the thread line, right? It's not gonna be on that area. So you pull back, if you saw residual, then you fill in that area and kind of finish softening it up. Um, same thing with your nasal labor folds, pull back on it, whatever you have residual, then you can inject there because you know, the, the filler doesn't interfere with that. Um, you know, things like that, examples other, uh, like other than that, uh, for example, your, your upper lip, um, smokers lines and such, you can do some crisscrossing um, lattices on that area. Um, I would, you know that where you need to go, that doesn't require any, you know, adjustment at, at, at game time, if we call it that. Uh, so I would go ahead and do your lip filler and then finish with that. Just put those in there and, and you know that that's, you know, that's going to do what it needs to do. Um, and so, the, and again, that's, it's one of those things I want my, the people hearing it from me to, to understand that you, I wouldn't recommend right off the bat, but it is definitely doable. Get comfortable with, you know, get your training, get comfortable with doing some on your own, and then sort of shorten your procedure time. Not because you're moving faster, but because you're moving more efficiently and you keep your sequencing your steps. And so it's the same step every time. And I think that that will help you accomplish the, the what I'm talking about in terms of being able to 
do the next step before your swelling shows up. <laughs> and then you, you make your, your own life a little bit more difficult. So, but definitely doable. That's great. No, great answer. Um, it was a good answer for everybody who had, who had inquired about that. Um, in the essence of time, because I know we've taken up so much of everybody's time, I'm going to keep it to two more questions. Uh, what's the recovery downtime associated with a thread lift? And then how often do threads need to be repeated? So recovery downtime, probably about a week that I would say don't plan anything too, uh, you know, too public um, just because there, there is different degrees of swelling. Part of the, the benefit of this is the reaction that the thread causes with your body. So you can create that collagen that can create more swelling in, in some people and, and less in others. So there's no way to, to promise, you know, how much you're going to get. Uh, also, a little kind of pro tip here. Uh, you have to understand that it, it's a it's a biologic reaction, right? So the more threads you put in, the more reaction you get. So you really can, in theory, do too many threads. So if it's a first timer, don't go for, you know, the gusto. Do one area first. They tolerate it. They didn't get that much swelling. That's pretty predictive as to what will happen in the future for them. So then now the next time you come back and kind of be a little bit more thorough with, with the coverage. But um, there are some people that get a big reaction and you're going to be like, oof. <laughs> And then, and then you, you don't want to get freaked out that something happened wrong. It's just everybody's different. And that's that's the human body's you know, reaction, which I'm sure we all know from the spectrum of even something as straightforward as a pain medication, right? A uh, Percocet can be like somebody taking feels like they're taking M&Ms and the other person takes half a pill and they're like passed out on the couch. So everything is, you know, has to be metered by you. Um, I think the recovery is on average about a week is what I tell people. Um, have I had some people say have maybe a little residual swelling like into the second week, perhaps, but not usually something where somebody's going to notice outside of like your immediate, you know, significant and other that's like sees you every day, but other people aren't going to be like, oh, what's wrong with your face? Like, it's more like a little bit of swelling that you might as a professional be able to discern when you look at them. And that's what we tell people, come back at two weeks so we can see you. That gives you a fair shot of that swelling being gone look at, you know, get a, a fair evaluation of what you've accomplished and see if you want to tweak anything else or, or add a separate modality. That's a, another, uh, you know, active, active, uh, you know, captive audience that you have for a few minutes to, to talk about what other things you'd like to tweak, because now they're going to be like, I, you know, I see the changes, you know, what else should I do? And, and, you know, that may not be your necessarily your plan, but that's how it happens. And so, you know, that's, uh, that would be my thing. One to two weeks, I guess, is the, the short answer. Okay, perfect. Um, and you know, you often to do them. Um, one to two years, you know, it depends. Everybody, you know, it, it ranges. Uh, the original uh, individual mono threads and all that, that that were early that we kind of touched on, um, you know, I'm not going to get into all the names, but the, the majority of them lasted for about six months, uh, which is okay. Um, but now you get to thinking, mm, okay, how are you going to present that to your patients, right? It has to be something where you can be realistic about them spending, you know, Six hundred to three thousand dollars with you for some threads. You're gonna go six months. You know, you 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 better have a good, a good reason for that being your 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 scenario. And that's okay. I mean, if it's just not a candidate for surgery whatsoever, then great. That's your option, and that's it. But the again, the benefit of the miracle threads, it's closer to one to two years, and that's more realistic. Now I can talk to you and say, hey, this will last you for a year. Most people are okay with that. Most people aren't going for something that's expecting some magic, like, oh, it'll last you 10 years. People are realistic for the most part <laughs> about those things, you know, and now from a surgical standpoint, yes, my facelift should last you, you know, eight to 10 years, but that's, you know, that's a facelift. That's a, that's something else. That's a much bigger investment, both from a recovery standpoint, procedure standpoint, you know, and economic standpoint. So, you know, realistic expectations are always good to set, but I think one to two years is reasonable to say for the American kids. Perfect. Final question. Um, and this is sort of a combination of questions we've received both before the presentation and, and during. Um, in terms of the Apollo training uh, that you went through, and of course, Apollo's here with us today, um, we've been asked whether it's a hands-on training, how many actual threads and, or insertions do you um, use during the training, and, and basically what areas do you learn or what do you provide? So it's a, it's I would say 75% hands-on, 25% uh, didactic, um, or maybe 80% hands-on. I don't know. It was, it was, it literally, I felt like we were maybe in didactic for an hour. It was two, two days, two full days of just, you know, it was just all, all useful, uh, you know, techniques, uh, you know, 
both from the marketing, from the anesthesia to, you know, vectoring, deciding, you know, your, your patient selection, deciding thread selection, and then placing threads. And uh, good question about placing the threads. Um, let's see. To do, I'm going to do like a rough count just on the, on the stuff I, I, you know, vaguely remember the, you know, the, the patients. And so if you, if you average out that you do probably three, six, you know, nine, 12 threads for a, a face and neck lift, right? Um, 13, 14, uh, 15, 16, I did, you know, lattices. So that's about five threads each way. So 10, 20, like talking about 36 threads just on a single model, right? Um, okay, brow lift, so a couple more there. So you, you're easily right at like right at 40 just on, on that person. Um, some body threads, um, you know, both decolletage, pulling there. You know, it depends what, you, you know, counting threads individually. I mean, probably close to 100 once you get through, you know, the, the number of models just kept coming through. And everybody's, is whichever, you know, I tried, <laughs> that this is just me, but I kind of wanted to do one patient as like, let me go from top to bottom, like eval everything they need and just try and get one of everything done. Once I did that, whichever ones I was kind of thinking I would get the most variety in terms of presentation from patients that came to see me, I tried to find other models and then try and do that thread on them without, because, you know, I'm, once I'm comfortable with it, I'm, I'm okay with it. I don't need to like hog it and be like, I'm doing all of them, you know? Um, so once I'm okay with it, then I'm good. I can move on. But the ones that I felt like I needed to tweak a little bit, cool. And if they're, and, and, you know, for everybody out there, you know, when it happens and they're like, does anybody want to do one? Just do it. Like that's the, the moment, you know, don't be, um, don't be shy. Cause you need to get comfortable. And, and that's the key. Like if you get comfortable, you win because then those threads get used. If you don't, they're going to collect dust in the back. <laughs> you know that. Yeah. No, that's, uh, we, we appreciate it. Um, thanks so much for your response and for staying with us today for over an hour. That's both to you, Dr. Salas, to all of our attendees today. Uh, I, I, we can't express our appreciation. I, I know this was a long one, but this was a lot of it, great information. And I also want to say a special thanks to Apollo Med Innovations. If anyone is interested in some information from Apollo Med, uh, if you're looking for formal training, if you just want a little bit more information or you have questions, I'm always available. And I know most of you, I've, I've probably spoken with you before. If you have not communicated with me, you can reach me at MedResults. I'm at Jamie at MedResultsNetwork.com, or you can always go to our website and I will find you. So thank you again to everybody. Uh, Dr. Salas, you've, you've been great. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your evening and enjoy your weekend. Take care. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. Bye-bye.